Ken Apple. Kenny, good morning to you, man. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Good morning, Ken. So this began when I texted you. Did you see, Ken, that the Senate has addressed the marriage penalty in their version of the uh, $600 million tax cut that they are proposing, which Craig Blair, Senate President, Friday, when he was on the program, said we've addressed the marriage penalty. Ken, have they? Uh, I think they think they have. Uh, I, I give them credit because everybody's going out and saying that they did, but I read the bill four times just to be sure, and, and I see nothing in there that fixes the marriage penalty. I, I think they're confused about married filing joint versus married filing separate, and I wouldn't expect them to know the ins and outs of that because they're not accountants, but I would have expected that they would have sought the advice of some accountants before they wrote what they wrote. Uh, I brought with me my uh, trusty 1995 West Virginia tax rate schedule. And the reason why you chose that year, Ken? Uh, it's because I haven't replaced it since 1995, <laughs> because they're still the same rates in 2022. And there are only two rate schedules. There is a rate schedule in West Virginia for people who are single. People who are married filing a joint return use that same schedule. Heads of households use that same schedule. And qualifying widows or widowers use that same schedule. The only reason that they have a second schedule is for folks who are married but filing separately. And that second schedule just cuts all of the brackets in half so that you can't take advantage of filing separately to change your tax bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, House Bill or Senate Bill 424 has that same schedule in it and all it does is drop the actual rate of tax by 15 percent uh, there's nothing in there that says anything about a different rate schedule if you're married filing jointly i think what they thought in one of the versions of the bill it eliminates the second schedule for people mar that are married filing separate and i think maybe they thought by eliminating that schedule that solved the marriage penalty but it doesn't uh, so uh, since 1995 and continuing today, uh, if you have two single people who are living together and let's say they each make $60,000, they would file two single returns and neither of them would pay any taxes at the top rate because the top rate does not kick in until you go above 60000 So they would each have the advantage of the low tax brackets on their first $60,000 of income. If those two people get married, now file a married filing joint return, they would still pay taxes at the highest rate on any of their joint income above 60000 So we would have an entire 60000 being the tax being paid at the top tax bracket if you're married. And that translates to about $2,000 a year per couple that they're paying $2,000 a year extra state taxes because they have a piece of paper saying they're married. Now, I've had people ask me if they could just file two single returns. And my advice on that is always the same. Is, uh, it works for taxes the same way it does in other areas of your life. If you act like you're single but you're actually married, you probably get in trouble. <laughs> I told you he was the funniest <laughs> man in the county. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of disappointed because I have reached out to my, our local senators. Uh, I know they're extremely busy in Charleston, uh, but I've shared my concerns with them and asked them to email me back or call me if they want to know why I, I think the bill doesn't do what they want it to do and how to fix it, but I haven't heard from any of them. So you're 100% positive that you're reading the, the correct bill, and that bill does not specifically say we fixed the marriage penalty by doing this? Uh, I'm never going to say I'm 100% certain. Uh, and that's why I was hoping that one of the senators would reach out to me and say, hey, you're reading the wrong version of the bill, mm -hmm. or yes, we know, and we fixed it, we've got something coming, uh, or you know, point me to where it is, because this, this, this uh, committee substitute for Senate Bill 424 is the one that I, I'm pretty sure is the one they sent over to the House. It's uh, 28 pages long, and the first 25 pages have to do with the rebate on property tax. So it gets pretty boring mm -hmm. to read. Uh, the first seven pages are, are definitions, and then you've got 
each classification of personal property. I'm not sure why they did it that way, but they have each classification of personal property. There's three pages to address each class. I assume that's so that they can mess with the percentages going forward and say we're going to give you a 50% rebate on computers and equipment, but we're only going to give you 25% on desk and chairs. I don't know. But, but they have each classification in there separately, as well as automobiles. And then they also have a provision in there, I, I don't know where it came from, to rebate the real estate taxes for any veteran who is combat disabled. So is the way to fix the marriage tax penalty, Ken, just simply doubling the table? Yes, two ways to fix it. Uh, one costs the state money, one brings the state money. So I, I don't care which way you do it, but do it either way. Uh, so we should have a, a – if we're going to keep the rate schedule that we have, which is a single person hits the top tax bracket at 60000 then a married couple shouldn't hit the top tax bracket until they hit 120000 So you just double all of the income guidelines for the rates, and you fixed it. All right, that costs the state money because these the typical married couple that I gave the example for is going to pay $2,000 less state taxes each year. So that has to go into your budget or into your figure. And I mean, I don't know. They, one, the House plan costs $1.2 billion. The Senate plan costs $600 million. Um, I guess that there's an awful lot of leeway there to, to negotiate. I would think that they would first, you know, some of your earlier guests today were talking about things that need to be spent in West Virginia. I would think that they would look at the budget and figure out what they have to spend and see what's left over for tax cut and put in a bill for that amount. Um, I can't imagine that the House thinks it's $1.2 billion and the Senate thinks it's only $600 million. Uh, but there's enough money in there, certainly, to fix the marriage penalty. The other way to fix the marriage penalty would be to cut that $60,000 limit in half for a single person so that the single person would hit the top tax bracket at 30000 and then you could leave that schedule in place for a married couple who would hit the top tax bracket at 60000 That's going to bring money into the state because single people would be paying a higher tax than they are now. So in, in an era of tax cuts, I doubt that they would want to go that way. So... Uh, that was a long answer to your question. The short answer is yes. All you got to do is double the brackets. And as when I was on here earlier, you looked up the inflation rate on the sixty thousand from nineteen ninety five, and it would be approximately that. It would be approximately one hundred and twenty thousand dollars today. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a real easy way to fix the marriage penalty. And of course, this bill, you know, it's not law, so it, it's going over to the House, and it, it probably won't look anything like this one when they finally get finished with it. Uh, but I'm concerned because three years ago, they all came back from Charleston with a bill that was passed and signed by the governor, and they all slapped each other on the back and came back and said, we've eliminated the income tax on Social Security benefits. Thank you very much. And they put so many limitations on it that it applied to almost no one. So uh, I want to I want to get this caught before it actually gets passed and signed into law. Good stuff. Matt Miller. When you talked about that they've got the tax to come back to you, a rebate for your personal property, in this case automobiles, how convoluted does that look when you read that bill? Is that something that simply would be a part of my tax form and might come out of taxes that I would owe or would have had to have paid? Or am I expected to fill something out and then get a check for that specific amount. Okay, excellent question, Matt. Uh, so, you know, you, you've heard me on here talk before about reform in West Virginia, and what I want to do is have less people filing a tax return, uh, which is why I like the, the bottom-up approach. Uh, not anybody making $80,000 or less, as one of your guests this morning mentioned. But if we can get people off of the tax rolls, uh, it costs the state money in taxes, but it saves the, the state money in administration. So right now we have, uh, I think this personal property rebate is going to work very, very much like the what I call the additional homestead credit. 
So if you're a low-income person who owns their own home in West Virginia, you not only if you're over age 65 or disabled, you're on the homestead exemption, so your real estate taxes are lower. But there's also an additional homestead credit if you're low income that you can take on your personal income tax return. So if you file, if you have enough income to file a West Virginia income tax return, you include it on there, and I think that's the way the personal property is going to be. You have to actually attach a copy of your paid bill. So you would have to have a copy of your paid personal property tax bill and attach it to your tax return. Of course, 90% people file an electronic return. So you would have to scan and PDF that and send it to the state. Obviously, that's going to be more administration for the state tax department because somebody has to physically look at that piece of paper and match it up to what's on your tax return before they're going to add it to your refund. The problem is for all the people who pay personal property tax, which is virtually everybody, right, who don't file an income tax return, now they have to file an income tax return just like the people that are claiming this excess homestead exemption. So instead of less tax returns being filed, there's going to be more tax returns being filed. And they're filing it only to get this credit because it is what we call a refundable credit. So if you don't have as much income tax as you paid in personal property tax, you still get all your personal property tax back. Does that answer your question? I think so. I, I tried yeah. to. I tried to no, follow all of you that. You had a chance. I, you should have said I, it depends. I, that was all, that's always the answer Ken gives. It depends. But the bill provides for a schedule to be attached okay. to your tax return. All right. Showing that you paid the tax, and uh, they went out of their way to say that you you can only get a rebate in this calendar year for part, personal property taxes you paid during this calendar year that were due this calendar year. So you can't have past due taxes and pay them and get a rebate on them. Uh, what it doesn't say, and I'll be interested to see the final version, is, you know, in West Virginia, your personal property tax bills come out in July, early August, and you have the option. You can pay the whole year at that time, or you can pay a half a year and wait until February to pay the second half. So if I paid my second half in February, but then in August I paid the full year, do I get a personal property tax credit for a year and a half's worth of per personal property taxes? The way the bill's written, I believe I do. And that goes into effect on January 1st of 2024. So when I get my bill in July, if this becomes law, I'm only going to pay half of it. I'm going to pay the other half in February of 2024 and then get a year and a half's rebate. You can do that the first time, but right. then after that, right. everything would fall in line. Right. But if I pay the full year in 2023, mm -hmm. it's gone. Right. Because 2023 is over and there's no rebate in 2023. So everything I've seen from what you've said is they're not really eliminating the marriage penalty. Now, I was married twice, and I felt just being married was quite a penalty. But I'm, I didn't feel like I should be double penalized tax-wise. The one thing, what is the number? Do you have any idea what the number is if they eliminate the marriage penalty, if they just do the doubling to 120000 What roughly will the state lose in tax revenue? Yeah, I, I have no idea. Uh, so it would, like I say, it would be approximately $2,000 times the number of married couples who have income above $120,000. Okay. So I can't imagine it's a huge number. It's got to be a small pool of people. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the married couples that make less than 120000 would benefit also because they're all paying more, but it wouldn't be to the tune of $2,000. Do you think that is the most important thing in the West Virginia tax code that needs to be corrected, that needs to be changed, or what, or what do you think is? No, I, don't, I, I mean, I think it's important because I, I don't think it's the state's job to encourage marriage or single. I mean, that's no business of the state government. I think every taxpayer should have a $60,000 limit, whether you're single or not single. Uh, back in the 1950s, when income tax codes, federal and state, were being developed, uh, maybe the typical family then was the man went out and worked and made money, and the wife stayed home and took care of the family, and there were some advantages to married filing joint. In my practice today, that's not the case. I mean, I can count on one hand the number of married couples I have where only one of the spouses work. So let's just give everybody a $60,000 exemption and, and go on. But to me, the most important thing is to raise the 
limits on when you actually have to file a tax return and pay any tax. Let's get people that are making twenty five and thirty thousand dollars a year off the tax rolls. Instead of them paying a few hundred dollars in personal income tax, let's get their tax down to zero. They don't have to file a return. It doesn't cost the state a ton of money and the administration is less. So you need less people in the state tax department working on these tax returns. Well, I assume the state tax department's having the same problem that all state departments are having right now, which is hiring and retaining people because there's, I mean, there's a dearth of people who want to work. Well, that may be true, but what's what's interesting to me is uh, I'm aging myself a little bit, but when I first started doing tax returns, we all mailed our tax returns in. So I printed the tax return, attached the W-2s to it, everybody signed it, you mailed it off to both the IRS and to the state tax department. And there were full-time employees at the state tax department that were getting those tax returns in the mail and sitting there and keep punching them in. Well, today virtually everybody files electronically, so you don't need any of those people to keep punch in. But they didn't get rid of anybody. So I don't know what these people (laughs) are doing now, unless they're sending out certified letters saying you owe us $3. Which has happened. Which has happened to me. <laughs> Certified letter costs how much to send? It's more than three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of it. I think it's just a first class stamp is what, sixty three cents now? Is that what it's up to? Yeah. I have for this forever stamp, so until yes. I use them up I don't know have to know what anything costs anymore. Hey, uh, CPA Ken Apple is our guest here on the program. Just a couple of minutes left. Ken, in regards to the, the Senate tax plan and the House and Governor's tax plan, one of which, which is a simple 50% uh, personal income tax cut with uh, the goal of getting to zero, triggering mechanisms are also in both of these uh, in order to further the cuts. Do you have any personal preferences as from a tax policy, which do you think is the better approach? Uh, I, the, the only reason I like the Senate's plan a little bit better is because it's obvious that they did some work. They thought about things and, and put it in there. Uh, that's my frustration with tax policy in West Virginia is everybody does what's easy. So saying, I'm going to give you a 30% across the board cut. That's easy. We didn't, we didn't think so. And that works if you think West Virginia's income tax policy as written is perfect. Then all you got to do is do an across the board cut. I obviously don't think it's perfect. And I think some thoughts should be put into it, like eliminating the marriage penalty like creating a standard deduction so that low-income people don't have to file a return in the first place. Some common sense solutions. And this is, I think, part of the frustration in discussing this topic is about four or five years ago, we were talking about overall tax reform in West Virginia Mm -hmm. and addressing some of these inconsistencies, things that could make it easier for people who don't make a lot of money. And that's kind of all gone out the window as these uh, surpluses fell on our heads like an anvil and became the attention getters. And it became now how much who can compete with who as to how big the tax cut's going to be or not. And I think these other little details are getting lost now. All right. Yeah. And the worst thing they can do is fight over this until the session's over and not do anything again. And that does appear to be the way things are going. And that's the way they've gone in the last several years. So, uh, Ken, just about out of time, how do people get in touch with you if they would like to get their taxes done? Yes, you can reach me today at 304-263-1100, and we'll take care of you. 263-1100, 304-263-1100. Ken, thank you. Great to see you again. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, some of our members of the audience said reach out to Delegate Mike Height. He's on the Finance Committee. They have that plan right now. might be better to go through the House. It was his mom who said that, by the way. Okay. She knows best. (laughs) 